Now, while Israeli and international authorities call for calm, several in the international community are also heavily pressuring Israel with condemnations over the clashes. The UN Security Council calling for an emergency meeting while Arab states like Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, Sudan, Bahrain and the UAE each call upon and dress down their respective Israeli ambassadors. And the United States likewise charging Israel with restoring calm on Jerusalem Day while ensuring religious plurality at all holy sites in Jerusalem. Prime Minister Netanyahu, for his part, however, defending Israel's position. Joining me now with more Middle East expert and lecturer at Bar Ilan University, Mordechai Kedar, an expert on the Middle East and U.S. Israel ties, former Israeli ambassador in the United States, Yoram Ettinger. Thank you both so much for being with us. Now, I'll start with you, Yoram. How do you respond to the international criticisms against Israel, uh, especially with respect to Jerusalem and religious plurality? Well, it's a sad reality, which is to be expected. Uh, the UN and Europe, uh, much of the world, is yet to accept Israeli sovereignty in Western Jerusalem, let alone in uh, reunited uh, Jerusalem. Uh, the UN has been a top supporter of rogue regimes, of terror uh, regimes, uh, one-sided as far as Israel's conflict with its uh, neighbors. But most importantly, when one uh, hears criticism of Israel's war on terrorism in Jerusalem, when one hears the immoral moral equivalence, one should realize this is the most effective tailwind to more terrorism, to more uh, violence. And certainly when there are calls for Israel to retreat and to concede, one should realize that Israeli concessions would serve as fuel, not water, to the burning uh, Middle East. And the past has proven that Israel does have the capability to defy global pressure, U.S. pressure, and in almost all those cases, in hindsight, it was Israel which was right and the critics were wrong. Uh, Mordechai Kedar, your response? Well, what you see today is the result of the Israeli weakness which was demonstrated several times in the past. And just to remind you what happened with the metal detectors three years ago when Israel was forced by the violence of the, of the Muslims to remove those metal detectors after the assassination of two Israeli policemen uh, on the Temple Mount. And uh, two weeks ago, Israel uh, surrendered and took out the metal barriers from the uh, Damascus Gate. And today is the result of the weakness which Israel demonstrated. Uh, I think that Israel should have uh, streamed to Jerusalem two or three brigades of the IDF and to flood Jerusalem, means East Jerusalem, with Israeli soldiers and policemen. Believe me, you wouldn't see these scenes. Uh, but okay, wouldn't that just exacerbate things? I, I mean, because we're talking here about uh, a supposed Palestinian response to Israeli force. So you're advocating increasing force. When those thugs, when they see force, they retrieve. When they see weakness, it encourages them. Look, today there should have been the flag parade uh, to commemorate the, the day of Jerusalem, the unification of Jerusalem. But lo and behold, in the morning, at 10 o'clock in the morning, the police decided to exclude the Temple Mount from this parade. Two, two hours later, when the Muslims understood that Israel actually shows weakness by not allowing this parade to go to the Temple Mount, they started the riots of today. Well, this is the iron. This is how it works. Well, when Israel shows weakness, 
it encourages their violence. When Israel shows power, they are retrieving. All right. So, in, similarly, many pressures against Israel uh, reject Israeli construction and advancement in Jerusalem. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu basically ignoring these pressures, especially when it comes to uh, the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. Let's take a look at what uh, Netanyahu had to say. <coughs> את הלחצים שלו לבנות בירושלים. ולצערי, הלחצים הללו מתגברים בעת האחרונה. אני אומר גם לידידינו הטובים ביותר, ירושלים היא בירת ישראל, וכפי שכל עם בונה בבירתו ואת בירתו, גם לנו שמורה הזכות לבנות בירושלים ואת ירושלים. כך עשינו וכך נמשיך לעשות. אמבסדר אגנגר, אני אחזור לך עכשיו. Going off of what uh, Mordechai Kedar was saying about inflaming with Israel's weakness the violence, uh, how do you view these comments from Netanyahu? Is he being too callous or is he in the right direction? Well, for, first of all, Palestinian violence has never been in response to Israeli aggression. Uh, Palestinian violence did not start with the reunification of Jerusalem. It did not start with Israel's returning to the mountain ridges of Judea and Samaria and the Golan uh, Heights. Palestinian terrorism started back in the 1920s. Uh, the PLO, the largest Palestinian terror organization, headed today by Mahmoud uh, Abbas, was established three years before the 1967 uh, war. When it comes to Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, rhetoric in face of pressure, first of all, I wish that his uh, talk would be matched by his walk when it comes to construction in Jerusalem. But most importantly, for those who utter criticism at Israel, they should realize Israel's defiance of terrorism serves the best of America's own interests the best interest of the democratic uh, world. Israel is the beachhead. Israel is the outpost of the free world here in the Middle East. And it is Israel which serves as a defense line of the free world. Israel's retreat in the face of the current wave of terrorism would provide a tailwind to Middle East terrorism to further their roles in Europe and all the way to the American continent. Uh, now, uh, Mordechai Kedar, I'm going to come back to you now. Isra many Israeli Arabic-speaking authorities have been uh, pleading with the Palestinians on the ground to uh, not be pawns of uh, political and militant Palestinian factions like Hamas and Fatah's military wing, uh, especially when, when it comes to using the violence to gain, again, as I said, political points uh, in the wake of the canceled Palestinian elections. How, how many Palestinians are actually really being manipulated as opposed to truly acting out of their own uh, sense of belief that is a reaction of their own, uh, 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 I should say, uh, experience? Well, there are several reasons uh, for this uh, rise uprise which, as we see today. First of all, let me tell you something, Aaron, something which uh, people are not aware of. Every single year, until last year, dozens of thousands of Palestinian youth used to migrate to Dearborn, Michigan, to Europe, to all kinds of places, and to United States and other places. Because of the coronavirus, they are trapped here while their friends, brothers, cousins are in Europe or in the United States. And they are so frustrated. And part of the, what you see today is the result of this frustration, since they cannot go to the States or to, the, to Europe to, you know, to be released from the Palestinian Authority, uh, the corrupt, uh, as it is. Uh, second thing is the Ramadan. Ramadan always is an increase of religious uh, sentiments, and what you see today is also a uh, part of this. Another thing is the incitement of, of Hamas, of the Islamic Jihad, and above everything, 
Iran, which, as you know, established the day of Jerusalem, the Al-Quds day, uh, in the end of Ramadan. And uh, definitely it pours more jet oil, I would say, on this fire. However, having said that, uh, if to go back to what Netanyahu said, I fully agree with what he said, but one sentence he missed. He should have said to the whole world that Jerusalem is our capital millennia before London became the capital of the Brits, before Paris became the capital of the French, not to mention a millennia before Washington, D.C. became the capital of the Americans. So I would expect, as a prime minister of Israel, he should have said that these nations will respect our ancient uh, capital when, mm. before they start teaching us what to do in it. All right. Uh, Professor Mordechai Kedar, Ambassador Yoram Ettinger, thank you again so much for, for being with us and for sharing with us your insights. Thank you.